Hey there, my name is Jaden, here as always for Foam Armory, and today we're going to be building my favorite Batman cowl of all time, Batfleck. Check it out. That's right, it's been one of the most highly requested builds on the channel, and today we're finally making Batfleck's cowl from Batman v Superman. On a justice. These pet patterns are available on our Etsy store at the link down below, so feel free to pick them up for yourself and follow along. As with any patterns, it's always best to begin by getting a solid idea of how everything fits together on the bench. The full build is symmetrical, so most of these pieces will be traced and cut twice, flipping as we go. The only exception being the two keystone muscle pieces under the chin. Once we're feeling confident with our patterns and our 3D reference, we can pull out our foam sheet. I recommend 5 to 6 millimeter foam for the entire build. It's a solid thickness that'll give us some structure for heat forming while still being pliable enough for the tinier details around the brow. Today I'm using Michael's Art Minds brand foam. It's a little softer than some other brands, which is ideal for the rounded, organic shapes of this mask. I went right ahead, tracing my paper pattern straight to the foam with a nice, bold sharpie being sure to note the registration marks in my patterns. These hash marks will be useful for preventing warping or stretching as we glue these opposing curves together later. A quick note on pattern organization. It's a good idea to mark up your patterns as you go to keep track of which pieces and sides you've already traced out. It helps cut down on material waste. With the main shape of the patterns fully traced, I set about cutting out the bulk of the pieces using a fine X-Acto blade. I keep my blades as sharp as possible during this process using just an ordinary kitchen sharpener. Like all my tools, you can find affiliate links down below if you're looking to pick one up for yourself. Most of the pieces of the mask are cut with a subtle outward bevel along the edges where the pieces are joined together. This will create the subtle and not so subtle bulges of the musculature of the mask down the line. You'll want to be consistent in your cutting to maintain the symmetry of the overall piece. Don't be afraid to take as much time as you need to make clean, smooth cuts. For the main headpiece, you'll want to make your cuts at a slight inward bevel along the cranial ridges of the helmet for a subtle angle along those head shapes. The brow forms will also need to be angled inward fairly intensely. Feel free to refer back to your 3D reference as often as you need to feel confident in your cuts. For everybody's benefit, I've included the full process of cutting out one side of the head and one band over the top of the head, including the somewhat finicky bit around the furrow of the brow. As we continue down the line, a quick moment of your time. These builds are a ton of fun for me to do, and I hope they're a lot of fun for you too. And if they are, please consider subscribing. For now, back to the video. Once you've got a very fun pile of raw foam parts, we'll need to go back to a few select pieces and add in some finer details. Specifically, we're looking at the brow insert, sides, and top of the headpiece. To create the furrow of the brow, we'll be making some hard folds along the dotted lines of the patterns, a nice V-groove along the top line, and a single undercut along the lower line. To help maintain these shapes, we'll put a healthy bead of hot glue into the recess at the back of the piece and quick dry it with a blast of compressed air. This is by far the hardest part of the build, so don't worry if you need to take a practice run at this particular detail. From there, we can go on to detail the sides of the head, especially the front of the face. We can trace the holes for the eyes right on the front face of the piece. We'll leave them in for now, but it's far easier to trace them out flat. Then, it's a series of undercuts to the back face of our parts. First, the hook of the nostril. Again, back filling with hot glue or a strip of foam. Next, we follow the lines in the corner of the nose for the definition in the wrinkles of the snarl. And of course, be sure to repeat for the opposite side. Lastly, there's just one more undercut that runs parallel next to the little slot of the pieces that go up and over the top of the head. All this undercutting does a great job of mimicking those fine, sculpted wrinkles. The results really speak for themselves. After a quick reorg, we can pull out our heat gun to put some tidy curves into our build and heat seal all our individual pieces. A good deal of this is done eyeballing the curves and referring back to that 3D model again. Don't worry too much about final fit here. We'll be able to adjust quite a bit after assembly. The heat forming is what really sells this build. The compound curves of the shoulders and all the muscles are super easy to achieve, 
bending the pieces back and forth in two directions at once. So get right in there and attack your parts. Pro tip, the inner faces of the ears meet the top of the head at a fairly intense curve. So it's best to lean into that now. It'll make assembling them together a lot easier once we get to them a little later. For the details of the mask, I pulled out a brush to act as a sort of buck to form against. It's super effective for the nostrils, and I was able to do much the same thing for the cheekbones using my thumb. Again, if you're worried about placement, you can always reheat and reform to adjust the build later on. With all of the pieces in their rough, final shape, we can bust out our contact cement. Contact cement is an effective bonding agent for foam construction because it remains flexible well after curing. Plus, it forms strong bonds almost immediately when applied correctly. I use DAP Weldwood brand contact cement in a well-ventilated environment, and I apply it using a foam chip brush. It goes on thin, which makes it easy to let dry for a second coat. To speed up the process, I use my heat gun to quick cure the glue and then carefully press my parts together. When assembling opposing curves, I find it easiest to touch the ends of the seams together first and then work back and forth between them to ease the pieces together. It helps relieve some of the strain on the join. Also, pro tip, having multiple pieces laid out at once lets you take advantage of dry times by assembling pieces while letting others continue to cure. I worked through the entirety of the neck muscles first, leaving the back seam open. You can start to see the muscles popping out very quickly. Those beveled edges create the heroic proportions of the musculature here as they're glued together. After gluing the front faces of the neck to the sides, I set the entire subassembly aside to work on the main head form. I began by fitting the brow piece to the top of the mask on both sides where the brow pieces slot in. It's easiest if you sort of wrench it apart so you can ease those edges back together carefully. Don't forget to attach the inner faces of the ears to the tops of the mask as well. Then we can fit those parts to the front of the face. There's a slight offset where it meets just above the eye, so be sure to pop it out just a bit. With the hard bits out of the way, you can push the pieces together along the cranial ridges, again, being sure to touch the ends of the pieces together to prevent warping, lining up those Sharpie marks from earlier. With both halves of the mask assembled, the mask is joined along the center line, being sure to take advantage of our registration marks and even out the nose and brow. Once we're happy with the head, we can take a moment to gingerly separate the eye holes we traced out earlier before bringing the neck back in to join the whole thing together. If you're worried about being able to slip on the mask later, you can definitely place a zipper along the center back of the neck. I was feeling pretty confident about my fit, so I glued the back seam together and then carefully attached the head to the neck, being sure to firmly press together every bit of the join. When you're all done, you should have a solid base that's honestly good to go if you'd like to jump straight to paint. I took the opportunity to test fit the cowl and have a little fun with the camera before setting out to tidy everything up and maybe punch out some of those details. To smooth over our edges and round over some of our seams, we turn to our handy dandy rotary tool. I used a stone grinding bit with a rounded end to avoid any hard grooves, gently knocking down some of our edges and sculpting into the ridges of the brow line even further. After I was satisfied with the depth of those details, I took some quick seal silicone caulk to my seams. This is actually another DAP product, and it makes a great, flexible, paintable filler for some of the more aggressive seam lines. I applied the caulk liberally to the grooves of the musculature as well as the seam lines over the top of the head. The goal here is to take a little water in your fingers to smooth out the joints into one continuous piece. Be generous, but don't be afraid to wipe away the excess. And of course, be sure to leave the piece to dry fully before moving on to final paint. I took a chance on Flex Seal for the finish on this cowl. It goes on super thick, so I only had to use one coat, and it dries to a very satisfying texture that works great for this cowl. As a final touch, I wanted to pop out the details of the face, so I mixed up some fairly dark gray acrylic and being sure to use the barest amount of paint on my paintbrush. I dry brushed those details to highlight all that awesome sculpt work. After a little more dry brushing, some extra shades, some poking and prodding, the build was finally complete.
So here it is, all finished up. I have to tell you, I am so in love with how this thing has turned out. I've made it before in the past, but gosh, it's always just a delight. Big wins! Back abs, neck abs, abs for the neck. The shape just turned out really great. And you know, it doesn't take a lot to get that shape. There's no sanding involved here. It's really just a little bit of filling and then the material takes you the rest of the way, which is great. Big wins. The snarl on the nose here is just so subtle, but you can really see all of it up close and personal. And that dry brushing really does pop it out just a little bit which, you know, you may very reasonably want to leave it that base black, but I think it really helps pop some of those details there. And of course, big wins, flex seal. This stuff is great for the texture we wanted to achieve here, and it just adds a lot of depth. And frankly, I was very surprised with what I was able to accomplish with just one coat. Kind of crazy. All that said, there's definitely places, as always, you could go further. I think I could have done even more to smooth out the top seam, but I'm pretty happy with how that's turned out. I do think that there's probably more shaping you could do in the shoulders, but that's just a little more time with your heat gun, a little more time smoothing it down to your shape. I do think I nailed the scale in terms of my face, although I think I might have, perhaps for me, just gone through and wooded everything down a little bit to fit my shoulders a little bit. They're big, they broad, but they're not quite so big. All this to say though, this is an incredibly easy build. I'm just choking out Batman now, that's yeah. This is an incredibly easy build and I would encourage you all to give it a shot because it really flexes those muscles in terms of making sure that you're cutting out things at the right angle. And there's a lot of fun detail to be sculpted out with your Dremel. So, I mean, try it out for yourselves, enjoy the process and really dig in on those details. Again, those patterns are going to be available on my Etsy store for just $3. It really helps support the channel. And frankly, I'm pretty happy with these templates. And like most of the templates that I sell, very cheap because I think these things are great tools for the community. And I hope that you enjoy them as well. Thanks so much for coming on this journey with me. This has been a highly requested build for some time. And you know what? There's another Batman movie coming out soon. So we're probably gonna be revisiting this well. Not to mention my groomsman and I just knocked out this really awesome Rebirth Red Hood helmet. Uh, so I might be doing a video on that as well, just because this thing uh, pretty intimidating. And it's got a lot of those same features in terms of the snarl and the nose shape. So, you know, stay tuned. I want to take a quick moment just to thank all of our patrons. These folks support us every single month and they really help us put together some of these builds in between bigger builds. And uh, yeah, you folks deserve to know their names. Sam, Suda Props, Laura, Benjamin, Ruben, Matt G, Pandulse, K Snake, and of course Austin of AJ Plays Piano. Thank you all so much for supporting the channel. It means the world to us. If you yourself want to become a patron, you can check that out with the link down below. For now, if you like the video, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Get this content as soon as it comes out. We have more stuff on the way, more builds, more patterns. So stick around. We live stream every Tuesday, Thursday, making new patterns in Pepecura, and of course, making new builds on Thursdays. So check out our streams, check out the community, and check out our Discord at the link down below. For now, I want to thank you all so much for watching. This has been an absolute delight. I've been Jaden for Foam Armory. Take care.